Okay, we're going to look at the workflow for shooting 4K video with the Panasonic FZ1000 4K video and super slow motion. So without further ado, let me turn on the camera. I've got it hooked up to my computer via the supplied USB cable. <clears throat> and this should now handshake with Final Cut Pro and prompt me to import the video clips. Let's give it a moment here. Okay, there's our import window, and I'm going to simply do an import all because I, all these clips are new, and I'm going to create a new event. I'm going to call it FZ1000. Uh, uh, 4K and slow motion. Okay, and I'm going to import all those. And you can see they're all coming in to Final Cut. And by the way, I have a 2010, I want to say, I want to say 2010 Mac Pro machine. So it's not the newest, but it is a Mac Pro and it has a lot of RAM and so forth. So they're importing now, they're 24%. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pause this recording until they're all done. It should only take a, a minute or so, but I'll just pause. Okay, so all the clips are in. It actually took about five minutes because the 4K files are pretty big files. So I'm going to say new project, and I'm going to say FZ1000 4K and slow motion. Um, o T I O N. It would help if I could type. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually this first project is going to be the 4K clips. I'm not going to mix and match these clips. All right. So let's put this one number one in the timeline. Two. That's a good one with them all laughing. Number three. Yeah, that one, number four. Number five. Number six. And this is the 4K video I'm working with here, by the way. Okay, there's a long one. Okay, now here, this I believe is the big clip here, the long clip. I'm going to have to cut a lot out of. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's see what we got here. Okay. Why is that one so long? Okay. All right, so I'm going to start at the beginning. Before you're going to feel that confidence, that connection. And I have no, and, and you know, it shouldn't take us eight years, especially if you're a And he was like, You're right. It's taken me eight years to feel comfortable enough to get on that stage before I even open my. Okay, so the audio really is not going to be usable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill all the audio. Okay. Okay, so I can cut this clip down. Cut that clip down. This clip here, the laughing clip. Okay, so I've got everything in the timeline, and I've done my edits, and I've added a little bit of music. Uh, now, oh, I actually, I've got to add the uh, wrap-up graphic here. Sorry about that. Here we go. I'm going to add my wrap-up graphic. Go ahead and extend that to the end of the music. Okay. Now, uh...
product reviews. Okay. So now they got the wrap up graphic on. I can go ahead and I can export this. So I'm going to go File, Share, Master File. And it's going to be 1.47 gigabytes. And this is a 2 minute and 56, 2, two minute and 50 second total. It'll actually be probably a little less than that. That's an estimate. Oh, slow motion. No, I didn't put slow motion in this, so I'll take that off. FC 1000, 4K. Um, I'm going to title this ESP Dancers. Um, dash FC 1000, 4K. All right, so save that. So we'll let that export. I'll pause here while that is exporting and then we'll do the slow motion clips. Okay, so the video is exported and man, it is sharp. Uh, it actually plays on my Mac Pro. You know, I'll play it a little bit. Of course, in this recording it's going to look jerky because ScreenFlow doesn't have a fast frame rate, but I'll just play a little bit of it. It really looks crystal clear. Of course, there's some motion blur when the, when they move and so forth. This was shot in relatively low light, so there's a little bit of motion blur, but that's fine. Uh, and I'll tell you what, I think the quality is very good considering it was just room lighting and, again, relatively low fluorescent lighting that they had above. I'm very pleased with the, with the performance on this. So now I'm going to go on and do the uh, slow motion clips. Okay, the other thing I did before I put this project to bed is I did a some uh, Ken Burns effect, which is like a pan and zoom, and and then I downscaled this to 1080p and exported it again. So I've exported this project twice, once in 4K, once in 1080p, and in the 1080p version, I've got some Ken Burns effects added. So here I'll show you a real quick clip here. You see the, a little bit of a zoom on this one. Watch here. And so that's a benefit of shooting in 4K where you can crop in and you're still going to have quality if you export it down in, in 1080p. You should still have pretty good quality even if you've panned in even a fair amount. So I just wanted to do a test on that. So I'll have a video up on that as well. Okay, so now we're going to do a new project. This is going to be the slow motion. So I'm going to say File, New Project, and FC 1000. Slow motion. I'll do 120 frames per second. Slow motion. Okay. And so let's go ahead and create that project. Now it should be this clip here. Hopefully that's the clip. I'm hoping. Okay, let's see if this is the clip. Okay. All right. So this is all slow motion. Of course, I got myself in the shot. I should have gotten a little tighter on this shot so I could get the angle, get me out of it. But oh well. It is what it is. We're going to see slow motion at least. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the beginning here and I'm just going to crop out the superfluous things in between their jumps. And so let me just pause while I do that because that's just boring stuff. So actually, I'll show you. I'll show you one. Okay, so I'm going to start at the beginning, just hit the space bar, and when we get to the point where I want to go with it, okay, let's say right when she's coming into the scene, let's say I'm going to cut just a hair before that, okay, and then here she's doing her jump, first jump, okay. She's going back out, 
Okay, then I'll cut there. And let's see when she starts her next jump. She's coming in right there, so there. So we'll take this part here out. Take that part out. And take this part out. So basically what we would end up with for her is this one here. She's jumping. And unfortunately the floor is shaking a little bit, so it's shaking my tripod a little bit, even all the way across the room. Here she goes jumping again. Okay, good. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to cut right there. So, and then she's coming in right there, so take that little bit out. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that the whole way through, and then we'll start the recording again. So let's pause right now. All right, so I've done all the edits. I've got each of the tricks in slow motion and then in normal speed. And so I'll give you an example here. Go to this one here. Uh, okay, so here we've got our slow motion. Notice the floor is shaking a little bit. That's that's something I didn't anticipate because it's actually a mat and the tripod's a distance away on a mat. But there's floor shake going all the way through to the camera. Live and learn. I turned the image stabilization off because I was on a tripod, but I probably should have left the image stabilization on. That might have helped with some of that shake from the floor. So there you're going to see them in slow motion and then at normal speed. So I'll go ahead and render this and upload it. But I am pleased with the 120 frames a second that this camera does. I am pleased with the quality. Some people have kind of gigged it on that, but I think it's pretty daggone good. So let's go ahead and export this. So to wrap it up, I did a test on the 4K video on the FC1000 and the 120 frames a second slow motion 1080p video and this is just my initial first tests in relatively low lighting and I think it's going to be okay if I could have just isolated that camera from the vibration on the floor we would have been better off but I think that it's uh, so far this camera is proving to be a good all-around camera not a great camera because the problem is it's doing so many things, it's always a compromise, right? If you want a camera that will do everything, it's not going to do anything great. But I think this thing does everything well or good. And good enough in many cases depending on what you're doing. So, of course, having the right tool for the job is always the best thing. But sometimes a multi-tool will save the day because it'll do what you need to do and you don't happen to have that other tool around, right? So this is a multi-tool camera. So anyway, thanks for watching.